writing checks that Janati's ass can't cash. Come Saturday, I'm gonna f Janati up. After bagging three devastating first round knockouts in his previous four outings, the Brownsville banger, Curtis Stevens, emerged as the first real credible puncher who could potentially carve his way through the unstoppable hype train of Gennady Golovkin. He's in my hometown, and come Saturday, I'm getting in the show. Too much talking every day, every time. This is my time. Stevens was a former light heavyweight who had decided to trim down to middleweight in an attempt to weight bully and bash around the naturally smaller guys. He was a decent enough boxer, but fell in love with his power. So much so that he would often lose track of his game plan just trying to set up a knockout shot. So when he came up against competent boxer movers like Jesse Brinkley and Andre Durrell, he looked out of his depth, and things could get a bit embarrassing in there as he crudely chased them around the ring. It's not whether can he fight, can he take a shot and withstand this thunderstorm I'm gonna give his ass. However, Golovkin's profile wasn't that of a boxer mover. Quite the opposite, a stalker puncher that would gladly stand and trade with all comers with varying styles. I like show my people my predator style. He's always looking to attack and to hurt. Sometimes I feel, oh, that's it like, it's finished? Down goes Rubio, second round knockout. Thank you very much. Buenas noches amigos, buenas noches, stop up. While still a relatively new face in the American boxing scene, Triple G had already built a large group of diehard fans that endeared to his all-action style. His persistence to make every second of the fight a phone booth-style brawl was a harken back to the old-school legends like Jack Dempsey and Henry Armstrong. Good left hand to the body and left to the head. Down goes Yet he did it with a modern Eastern European style twist, with unusual feints, shimmies, and punching angles that kept the crowd, but more so his opponents, on their toes until the inevitable knockout shot landed. Now, Golovkin's going to have to do what he has to do like that to get Macklin out of here. Puts Macklin down. After the second round, I understand that he's not boxing. I need street fight. Like, you know, just broke him. Golovkin, much like Tyson, had an aura of invincibility that struck fear into his opponents. But that's what made the Stevens fight so interesting. Curtis wasn't afraid at all. He saw Triple G as an easy target to attack verbally because of his basic understanding of the English language, and an even easier target to attack in the ring due to his aggressive style and perceived loose defense. Um, who's scared of him though, huh? Eh? Ain't nobody scared of him. And I'm gonna go in there and do what I do and show everybody that he's not like that. He's not like that, he's overrated. I'm gonna go in there and demolish his ass. This one had all the hallmarks to be a memorable slugfest. BLTV picks up the action from round one. Curtis Stevens' big shot is his left hook. He just tried one against Golovkin moments ago. Golovkin lands a left hook of his own. Well, Triple G is doing a good job throwing out early with his jab, trying to keep Stevens away from him so he can't land that left hook. Thing to see Golovkin backing away from a guy, but he respects Stevens' power. And a good big... left hook, keeping his gloves up and focusing on defense. Now he tries a big shot. Dulled Golovkin's normal early rounds attack. And Stevens landed a left hook that knocked Golovkin's head back. That's what his corner wanted. Right hand for Golovkin. Stevens with another little counter left hook. Good right hand by Golovkin. Good left hook. Oh. Down goes Stevens. There it is. Isaac Thunder in round number two. Steven's face told the whole story of how the opening rounds and early knockdown came about. Golovkin wasn't just a slugger, more so a calculated offensive beast that when he lands, it's always with bad intentions. He runs across the ring, bangs Stevens into the ropes. 10 seconds to go in the round, body shot, looking upstairs, misses with the left hook, lands a right hand, wobbles Stevens with it. One more right hand and the round comes to a close. Stevens made it through the round, but Golovkin's pressure never faded, which in turn opened up a window of opportunity for Curtis to get off some of his own power punches as Triple G opened up. As Golovkin jabs him into position in the corner, throws a right cross. Two big right crosses by Golovkin and the possibility of a counter shot. That last right hand and left hook with the right hand. Lufkin lands a, an uppercut and a left hook. Taking advantage of Stevens' offense to counter with a 
couple of shots down the stretch. Steven's chin held up, and he started to make the fight more competitive as it approached the midway stage. Lovkin knocking him back with the jab, lands a right hand over the top. Stevens much more aggressive than he was in the first three rounds. Now countering Golovkin's big stuff with big stuff of his own. Left Lands a left hook there. Oh, big left Whoa. hook by Stevens. Momentarily wobbled Golovkin. Golovkin lost a couple of rounds, which served as the wake-up call he needed to get back to work and start forcing the issue on the front foot. Something Eastern European fighters seem to do very well. He's landed some good shots in this round. Now Golovkin with a body shot and a right cross and momentarily hurt Stevens. Good comeback uppercut and a right cross by Stevens. And the left hook. Stevens Golovkin trying to measure him one more time. Yes. Right cross for Golovkin. Body shot, uppercut, right cross. Very active round for Gennady. He wobbled Stevens with a couple of shots and is still seeking a knockout. It's nothing easy for him. Golovkin's pressure started taking a toll on Stevens as the former light heavyweight was bullied into the back foot for six minutes straight. Even Curtis's own mother had seen enough, storming out of the arena before the bell rang for the seven. The corner wanted to know why Stevens was against the ropes. I think it was those body shots by Golovkin in the last round, but here Stevens is trying his best to stay in the middle of the ring. And stay in the middle of the ring, but now Golovkin backs him to the ropes. And you heard Andre Rozier say it's not a good place for you. Golovkin keeps his chin tucked well, even if he doesn't always move his head. It looks like if we get a knockout by Golovkin, it's going to be the submission of Will Barayek in three of them in this round. Thunder on the liver. Golovkin's still alert enough to back off those up. Hard right hand body shot. Incipient beat down in Madison Square Garden. It could be thrown back just enough to stop the ref from stopping it. Big right cross by Golovkin. Whipping Curtis Stevens into the corner. And they're going to stop it in the corner. That's a great stoppage. Andre Rozier had seen enough. That's a great stoppage because the temptation with a guy who hits like Stevens. Stevens was beaten into submission by the end of the eighth, folding to the relentless pressure of Triple G, gladly accepting his corner's white towel after putting up a valiant effort. What was your plan for the fight? My plan just box, you know. I know I'm champion. I know I'm better. My power better, my speed better, you know, just. I show you for, for gym, for TV, for my fans, you know. Stevens was a solid puncher, but as the future title reign of Triple G would go on to prove, you need to be more than just a banger to even stand a chance against the Kazakh killer. Like I said, in, in Golovkin fight, I didn't have no game plan. I thought I was gonna go in there and knock him out. Listen, Golovkin did what he did, he beat him. I'm not gonna take nothing, I'm not gonna take that away from Golovkin, you know? Respect to him for that. To be fair to Stevens, he's always been humble enough in discussing this fight in the aftermath, giving Golovkin the credit he probably should have considered before he got in there and decided to try to disrespectfully slug it out with, as he put it, no game plan at all. Like I said, in, in Golovkin fight, I didn't have no game plan. I thought I was gonna go in there and knock him out. In the end, it wouldn't be a slugger, a puncher, or a slickster that would dethrone Golovkin. Instead, a mixture of the three as he battled out two modern-day classics with the future Hall of Fame legend, Saul Canelo Alvarez. Many argue, though, that Golovkin won both fights by being the more active punching aggressor. I want to say, like, I want to shake hands to Canelo, you know, congrats, all team, you know, guys. It's a real warrior. If you not understand, you not understand nothing. Golovkin hung up the gloves at the end of 2022. He was a fantastic fighter, a real throwback. It's always a pleasure to cover his fights, and I plan on doing many more for this channel down the line.